Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties, Nick Adams, Anna Casiejos, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. I'm Anna. Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And today we're breaking down Taylor Swift's song, You Need to Calm Down. You need to calm down. This is the 14th track from Taylor's album, Lover. It was written by Taylor and Joel Little. And this was a pretty big statement. This was a big one for Taylor. Yeah. This was this was uh, maybe out of her comfort zone, but I, I mean, it definitely took a lot of people by surprise. Mm-hmm. She came right out as an ally. And in the Spotify storyline for this song, she said that she wrote this song with all of the energy and effort that some people put into spreading negativity. With all the trolling, cancel culture, telling people how to live their lives or pitting women against each other, you're being too loud. This is a song where I'm saying you need to calm down. Go outside. It's the summer. The song touches heavily on the topic of negativity in many different forms, and Taylor is telling these people to focus their energy away from tearing other people down as negativity is unnecessary. And guess what? What? She got negativity for it. <laughs> yeah. She like, oh, she's so opportunistic. It was ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. Anyways, the queer eye guy, Tan France. Love yes. Tan France. Yeah, he he defended her. You know, like let let anybody be on our side. We'll take mm-hmm. any out. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, did you guys know that there was an Easter egg for this song in the Me music video? No. Tell okay, me. Okay, so Me was the very first single off of Lover, mm-hmm. and then this was the second one. And so, at the very beginning, do you guys remember at the very beginning of Me, she and Brandon Yuri are arguing in French? Yes. So, yeah. here's a quick snippet. Calme toi, s'il te plaît. Je suis calme! So he tells her, you need to calm down. And she says, I am calm. So that's that's so before me, the music was even playing, we already yeah. got an Easter egg for the second single. It was, just, it was guess, so yeah. crazy. I remember when the me music video came out and we obviously knew there was Easter eggs in here. We knew there was, we we're going to be looking for things as we do with any video. But when we started watching the video and they're speaking French, I remember being like, oh. I got to translate now. (laughs) I got to translate. I don't even know what I'm looking for. (laughs) Well, whenever Taylor released this music video before she did, she released the lyric video and she explained on her Instagram live on June 14th, 2019, why she did it that way. So a lot of people I saw had a theory regarding the idea of calm. So I can, I can confirm that I have a new single coming out tonight at midnight. It's called You Need to Calm Down. I'm so excited for you to hear it. It's out at midnight Eastern everywhere. And the video doesn't come out for another couple of days because I wanted you to hear the song first and then see the video because the video is very worth the wait. There's a lot going on in the video. And so I wanted that to be like a separate, a separate discovery. Because she knew that the lyrics were too important. So Mm -hmm. she didn't want to come out with this music video that has everything going on in there and all this stuff to break down, which we will be getting into that because she knows how important these lyrics are. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into the music video, I want the very first line. Say it in the street, that's a knockout. But just say it in a tweet, that's a cop out. So obviously what she's talking about there is social media and people just bringing other people down. And she's spoken out about social media before saying our priorities can get messed up existing in a society that puts currency on curating the way people see your life. Social media has given people a way to express their art. I use it to connect with fans. But on the downside, you feel like there are three trillion new invisible hoops you have to jump through and like you'll never be able to jump through them all correctly. I, along with a lot of my friends and fans, am trying to figure out how to navigate living my life and not just curating what I want other people to think living my life is. I'm not always able to maintain a balance and I think that's important for everyone everyone else to know about. We're always learning. And that's something that I also had to learn that I have to be brave enough to learn. Learning in public is so humiliating sometimes. Do I feel more balanced in my life than I ever have before? Yeah, probably. But is that permanent? No. And I think being okay with that has put me in a bit of a better position. But of course, she mentions snakes and stones never broke my bones. Well, that's because she was flooded with the snake emoji Mm -hmm. the previous year before from all the Kim Kardashian lovers. Right. And she took back the power from the snake. Sure. Mm -hmm. The snake on stage. What did she name the snake? It wasn't Karen. It was, or was it? It may have been Karen. Was it Karen? 
It wow. might have, it might have been Karen. I don't remember her naming this name. Yeah, I, I remember like in her circle. She, sorry, I should know. It was Karen. It was just yeah. spelled, it's spelled with a Y. K A R Y N. Look at How that, funny. Karen. She was doing a Karen <laughs> before. long before it became a thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a visionary Taylor Swift is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Taylor Swift spoke to Vogue about why she decided to uh, become more vocal. She recalled that she had a conversation with Todrick Hall, and she called the conversation devastating. Um, So Taylor said, maybe a year or two ago, Todrick and I, we were in the car, and he asked me, what would you do if your son was gay? The fact that he had to ask me shocked me and made me realize that I had not made my position clear enough or loud enough. She said, if my son was gay, he'd be gay. I don't understand the question. If he was thinking that, I can't imagine what my fans in the LBGTQ community might be thinking. It was kind of devastating to realize that I hadn't been publicly clear about that. Mm-hmm. Look and, at that. And she touched on that in the Miss Americana documentary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, not just about where she stands like with uh, LGBTQ, but like just in general, like yeah. where she stands on certain topics when it comes to women's rights, when it comes to yeah. you know anything. And she was like, I need to, I need to speak up. Like I'm at the point where like. So I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. Right. You know. Yeah. And with this song, you know, a lot of people said it was her most political move ever. It was her riskiest like career move ever because Mm -hmm. she's making a big leap um, and including a lot of celebrities and other people in her music video that we'll talk to. And she's speaking on a topic that's very divisive. You know, can you imagine growing up as a country artist Mm -hmm. to then be super popped and super supportive of the LGBTQ community? It's going to divide a lot of your fan base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's cool because in the song in itself, like it's very, you know, LGBTQ pride and we see that in the music video and like everything. But then also at the end of the song, it also kind of has like feminist tones. You know, she's talking Mm -hmm. about like women being compared to each other and we all have crowns and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool because she kind of touches on a lot of sense of equality. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love her. (laughs) What? Did you know that? (laughs) You should should start a podcast. Did I? Yeah. (laughs) So should we jump right into all the, how many thousand Easter eggs that are in this music video? A bajillion in the music video. Oh my God. How many times did you guys watch this music video just to try to find Easter eggs? I mean, (laughs) a lot today and I still missed them and I (laughs) knew what I was looking for. But I do want to say that this was perfectly described every feeling I've ever had whenever Taylor Swift releases a music video. This was an article that was published on June 17th, 2019. An article on Vulture said, well, it's been a chaotic morning in the Taylor Swift extended cinematic universe. (laughs) Taylor Swift dropped her new music video for You Need to Calm Down, and it's brimming with Easter eggs and metaphors that demand critical analysis. Right now, we've got a team on the floor decoding everything in that video. (laughs) The (laughs) T-S-C-U. So I tried my best I mean, I obviously have a couple of pages of notes just on the music video. And and she's not, Anna's not exaggerating. I'm not she exaggerating. She literally has. I have pages. Pages. They're Why so thick she couldn't. I'm still writing pages. Um. <laughs> so, so thick she couldn't staple them. <laughs> I tried my best to go in order of the actual music video. As they appear. As they order appear. Order of appearance. I don't know how you guys want to do that this. good. I know we all have a lot of things we want to talk about but if we could just like start at the beginning of the video going chronological order okay and can we just say how colorful and pretty this oh, music video is yes. there's so many beautiful. like vibrant colors in yeah. this it's pretty cool makes me happy beautiful so the music video starts out there's a lot of things well i actually watched the video yesterday that was like talking about the music video mm-hmm. and it's kind of broken down into like three scenes okay. if you will okay so you know at the beginning like she's in the trailer and it starts out and she's like kind of wearing this like lingerie-esque type thing which looks very similar to the Blank Space video. Yes. Okay. And I mean, a little bit later on in the video, I'm, I just said let's do chronological, but I'm going ahead. <laughs> a little bit later on, the trailer that she was in is burning. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really interesting. Somebody online said that that could basically represent how like inside that trailer, if she's referring to Blank Space, which Blank Space is all about like the media and how the media portrays her. And now she's burning it down. She's kind of like burning down like this era or this time Mm. where she's like, I'm taking control, Mm -hmm. I guess. I thought that was cool. Last night was the first time I had seen that interpretation of it. So I wanted to share. There was a different theory on that same. Now now I know that we're officially jumping around. But (laughs) there's something that has to do with daisies. And she has a daisy in her drink. And that was representative of something to do. Oh, it was known as a Kaler symbol. And so... This all comes back to the bisexuality Mm -hmm. rumors, which later comes back into play because we know what she has spoken out and said again. So this is not true, but this is what people were thinking at the time that um, they thought that was Taylor Swift coming out as bisexual for the first time. And the song and video 
um, confirmed her relationship with the Daisies. And that has something, I don't know what that has to do with Kayler, but according to this, it does. And the trailer on fire was her coming out of the closet is what some people thought. Okay, So I saw someone refer to the Daisy in the cocktail, but I never saw that it was a Daisy. I saw that it was a flower with yellow petals and it made me think of the flower dress that she wore to the Grammys and she added that extra sunflower to the bottom, which also has yellow petals. So it made me think, I don't know, but there's some, maybe we don't necessarily, we're not sure it's a daisy, but we do know it's a yellow flower with petals. I always, oh, I see it now. I'm sorry. I see it now. Sorry for my <laughs> sloppy notes. Carly Claus once posted a photo of a daisy after road tripping with her gal pal and wrote best road trip ever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why did okay. I think daisy was a reference to Katy Perry? Katy Perry's daughter? That's her yeah. daughter's name. Oh, okay. right. Well, since we're on the subject of Kayler and Taylor's own sexuality, which she's said that she's not gay or bisexuals. Um, but um, one of the things that people were theorizing is that she did come out as bisexual in this video because of her hair color. Her mm-hmm. hair is the same color as the bisexual flag, mm-hmm. magenta, purple, and blue. Those are the colors that are in Taylor's hair. So that's that people thought that was her way of she's subtly but I think nodding. She's just being really supportive. Could be, yeah. could be. Because if she has like said, you know, that she, like she hasn't come out as being, uh, I mean, she's like said, I'm straight. Yes. Mm-hmm. Essentially, she's yes. straight. She's an ally. And this video and this song just kind of proves that she's just incredibly supportive and an ally for sure. I just feel like I know that we love Easter eggs and that's Taylor's thing. But I feel like with something as big as coming out, I feel like she wouldn't do that in an Easter egg. She wouldn't egg. play around like she wouldn't that. Play, I think that's just so serious. And like she wouldn't do that to her LGBTQ fans mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. make them have to like guess. You know what I mean? And she directly addressed it after this music video because everybody thought this was her coming out. Mm-hmm. Right. And so once people were tagging her and stuff, which we'll get to later, once people were tagging her, that's whenever she made her statement and said, I'm an ally. I'm not a part of the community, but I am an ally. Right. Do we want to start at the very beginning now? Again, (laughs) back to the beginning. Back to back to the beginning. The first thing you see is the needle point that says, "Mom, I am a rich man." That's not the first thing now that I realize that you're talking about, like Uh, the the mask and everything, which was very Audrey Hepburn. uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's look was something that I read. But the mom, I am a rich man. People were wondering because the whole album hadn't come out at the time. Is that an Easter egg for another song that she's going to do another man or something? Well, no, that was a quote from a 1996 interview with Cher and the video Cher tells the interviewer. My mom said to me, you know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry a rich man. And I said, mom, I am a rich man. I love that. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I love that so much. Mm -hmm. And could also just be kind of an Easter egg for the man, you know, the song, the man. Mm, True. Yeah. If you will. At some point also in the beginning, we see the dice on the table. When it's like, we kind of see like a few shots of just like random items on the table. Mm -hmm. So the dice we know now could refer to the lyric, Mm -hmm. devils roll the dice, angels Mm -hmm. roll their eyes. Mm -hmm. The dice also, if you (laughs) count them up, they add up to 67. And there were 67 days between the release of the music video to the Lover album. (laughs) (laughs) What? Also, six plus seven equals 13. Um, <laughs> but the, okay, but if you look at if you look at the scene of it, there's like some dice like that are on the table, and then some that are in like a little cup type thing. And the dice on the table, not the cup, just on the table, they add up to thirteen. And then on the next shot of the of a table, you see some candy, and the candy on the table there's six. And so people are thinking, oh, six for June for Pride Month, mm-hmm. maybe because that's the whole theme oh, of the music video. Wow! Yeah, that makes sense. So oh I thought my that was gosh. Cool. Down to the candy on the table. Down mm-hmm. to the candy on the table. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> All wow. the details. I don't know why I yeah. said it in that way. <laughs> She's so giddy. <laughs> well, also during the music video, you see her toss her phone and her phone's on fire and she has the lover case on it. Yes. And that made people wonder if that was going to be the name of a single. And they were speculating, saying that... Um, Taylor hadn't had a title track on her album since Red in 2012. So they were thinking this might not just be the name of the album. This might be the name of a song. And they were correct. Your favorite song Mm -hmm. on the album. Mm -hmm. And that phone case, the sparkles on the phone case, match the outfit that she wore to the iHeartRadio Music Awards, which was her first public appearance in the Lover era. What? Wow, that's crazy. She's matching and her I'm phone sure, case. And I'm pretty sure that phone case was like on her merch store. Like I yeah, think you could buy it. Yeah. I think you could buy it. But, then, but something- only for iPhones. Okay, I'm done with that. What kind, <laughs> of, phone you, what get, kind of phone do you have, Amy? Uh, but then the phone Andrew. catches on fire, and people think that could be a nod to her being over the pain that's been caused to her by phones via Kimye, hmm. the 27-second phone call, just yeah. done with phones. Huh. 
There's also the scene where she's walking out of the trailer. I guess this is whenever it is on fire yeah. and she's walking away and she kind of drops her shirt a little bit and you can see a big tattoo on her back and it's butterfly tattoos with two snakes intertwined on her back. And it symbolizes not only her transformation out of the reputation era, but also burying her feud with Katy Perry, which comes up later. Lacey, congratulations. I know, I'm so you proud of you. said era correctly. <laughs> I don't say it wrong all the time, do I? Well, enough for us to point uh, out when you do it right. I'll, okay. say, I'll say 12 out of 13. Okay, okay. <laughs> and did you notice that in that same scene, when she's wearing the sunglasses, her sunglasses have 13 rhinestones on them. Oh, my Aww. goodness. <laughs> and the earrings that she's wearing, the heart earrings, they match Katy Perry's earrings from a photo of her. Whoa. From, like, October of 20. So that's a little foreshadowing 18. to the end of the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which I think that also, like, you could see her earrings in the cover art for the song that we had gotten before the music video. It was like the back, you know, her back mm -hmm. with the tattoos that you just said, and the earrings. And since then, fans were like, this has something to do with Katy Perry. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I really like that trailer park. I would love to go hang out at that I trailer know. park. Oh. With the above ground pool. Mm -hmm. It looks like so much fun. Which mm -hmm. also, her in the above ground pool, they were saying, kind of symbolized that she used to have all these parties with all these people and um, big pool parties and good times. And now she's hanging out in the pool by herself, kind of like, I'm Aww. I'm fine. Well, almost also, I'm fine being by myself. Sure. Like, mom, I am a rich man. You know, right. I don't need I don't need everybody to be around me all the time yeah, because I'm like fine. That. I'm in a good I'm in a good place. Don't I have to always yeah. be a spectacle. Yeah. I like that interpretation. And that pool that like outside of the pool was covered in flowers. Mm -hmm. And some people people think that like a few a little bit before the music video she had done like some public uh, performance maybe the iHeartRadio music awards or something um, but at one of her performances she had said I there is an easter egg in this performance and if you look back at it um, the backdrop to the performance was just like a wall of flowers that match the flowers hmm. on the edge of the okay. pool so maybe she was hinting at one of the thousand Easter eggs in <laughs> this music video well I mean that just goes to us wanting to ask her the question like what mu what what am I trying what to say? What Easter egg have we not caught? Yes. What Easter eggs have we missed or before? Which ones, or which ones, like Nick had said, like which ones weren't Easter yeah, eggs? Yeah, what's not an Easter like, egg, was, but it was just yeah. a happy coincidence. Like, oh, yeah, that is what that tattoo symbolized. <laughs> oh, that, that is what those oh. flowers around the pool mean. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, that release yeah, date that does works. add up to That 13. works, team. <laughs> oh, well, I have one that's going to make Anna mad in a oh, little bit, oh, but we're no. not there yet. Good an tease. Easter egg? Mm-hmm. That's going to make me mad? Yeah. An Easter egg, or was it an Easter egg? I'm a little concerned why she's so happy that <laughs> it's going to make you mad. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just, you're right. You're I right. just don't know. I just, I love, oh. I love the stress that it brings you just from just from one simple sentence. That's I it. think I know what you're going to you say. You know, giving away too much already. I don't. That Amy was too I, much Amy in an Easter gonna, egg. <laughs> Amy and I are going to sit back and listen. I know. Well. The trailer park, the super beautiful, colorful trailer park, is also located on 16th Avenue. Yay! Yay! Skipping down 16th Avenue. Were you going to play a clip? Because I just did. <laughs> <laughs> there are literally a lot of people who need to calm down. And if you feel like you're one of those people that maybe it's time to get some help to talk to somebody and air out your issues with a professional, you can call our friends at BetterHelp. Yeah, we love BetterHelp because you can connect with a licensed professional therapist in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can have therapy from the comfort of your own home. You can sit on your couch, have a video session, a phone session with a licensed professional to get the help you need. It's not a crisis line and it's not self-help, but it is professional counseling done securely online. And you don't ever have to sit in a waiting room, which is some of the best part. You can schedule it on your own time, like Nick said. And they offer so many different services from anxiety to depression to anger. Even if you're having sleeping issues, also relationship problems, self-esteem, grief, they cover everything. I like the fact that I can message my counselor anytime. I message her whenever I need something and then schedule weekly sessions with her as well. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Taylor Swift fan. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Taylor Swift fan. Okay, back to the song. So Amy mentioned Tan France earlier. He's the fashion guru on the Queer Eye reality show. And he got his solo moment where he's just strutting down the street, drinking from a pot of tea. So it's like, okay, well, what are you trying to say there? Are you spilling the tea? I mean, it's not really spilling because you're gulping and it's just going straight in the mouth. But, you know... Now that that was referenced to London Boy, 
for a high tea in the afternoon. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh. Because that's a, an English thing. Then you've got the Olympic figure skater, Adam Ripton, and he's spotted serving snow cones. And that's a wink to his prowess on the ice since he's <laughs> a figure <laughs> skater. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice that one. I do think one of my favorite Easter eggs on this was the like Target dartboard with the five on it. Yeah. Because we like saw that. So uh, Haley Kiyoko, she's like a singer. She shoots an arrow into the five. And when we saw that, we're like, oh, that's track five. That's haha, got it, Taylor. You can't fool us. But the real thing was that she was shooting an arrow. It was like the archer. archer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, I just like whatever. But I did read somewhere, maybe I saw in an interview once that, because I've always wondered if you were to, if you work with Taylor Swift on a music video and you know she's packing it with Easter eggs, do you, as part of the music video, do you know what the Easter egg is? Mm-hmm. Do you know what you're doing? Or are you just kind of like, okay, Taylor, tell me to hold up the number two and I'll do it for you. Like, uh-huh. whatever. I've always wondered that. And Haley Kiyoko, she had said that Taylor asked her, she was like, will you do me the honors of shooting the, like the bone arrow into the five? And she explained it to her, like how it was an Easter egg. And Haley was like, oh my God. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> like Whoa. track five is a big deal. It is. <laughs> like a really, really big deal. So I just thought that was cool. Well, it's funny that you mentioned five Anna because five holes in the fence theory. I knew it. I knew you were oh, gonna no. I just knew it. So I just knew that was coming. So this article that I read mentioned um number five is prominently hit on and Haley Cuoco shoots an arrow into the target and literally six into number five. Back in February, Taylor also teased the number five with a cryptic image that featured five holes in a fence which fans assumed was a countdown, but nothing ever happened. And the album art for You Need to Calm Down, an orange five fence post is shown. Taylor poked fun at the fandom by posting a picture of said fence and captioned it, there were five holes in the fence. Some very (laughs) smart fans think that the song five will feature her old pal Haley Williams, who also has a song called Fences with Paramore, and that was in her orange hair era. Oh, that would have been good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, Haley Cuoco and Haley Williams have the same name. So that was what they were thinking was going to happen then. It didn't, but that's what people were thinking. They were thinking a lot more than Taylor was in that moment. <laughs> possibly. Possibly. Or she's just never admitted to the five holes. I think overthinking things when it comes to Easter eggs is something we all tend to do. No. <laughs> Swifties, there's no way. What? We don't overthink things. What? I'm going through watching this music video while you guys are sharing all of the Easter eggs. And uh-huh. there are so many cameos in this. It's oh, yeah. like I've had to rewind it 17 times and I'm still like coming on people that I forgot were in this music video. I have video. a whole list. Do you want me to just tell you who they are? I mean, if you want. Or you can keep reading I have it a in order. I'm, your I don't favorite. Ruin no, your vibe. You say the list and I'll tell you my favorite. Or I guess we can just as we go along. Another one that we failed to mention that was at the beginning of the video was Ellen DeGeneres. Yes. She's getting a tattoo from Adam Lambert. I did not realize that was Adam Lambert. It doesn't until really today. look like him. Yeah, right? it doesn't look like yeah. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Lambert's giving her a tattoo on her arm that says Cruel Summer, which we now know is obviously a title of one of the best songs ever written. Which Ellen also hinted at when Taylor was on the Ellen show mm-hmm. a few weeks before. And some people were theorizing that the reason it was Cruel Summer, because it was before the song came out, was because Carly had gotten engaged over the summer. Ooh. And also, we're forgetting about all the protesting that was going on. So you've mm-hmm. got all these protesters yeah. that are outside while they're laying out in front of their trailers. Protesters, and one of them had a sign that said, get a brain moron, which is funny because it was misspelled. And then I had to double check because I'm like, is that misspelled? Because it was more <laughs> it was more ran. But yeah, it was misspelled. And that's funny because in her last song, Me... She said, hey, kids, spelling is fun. (laughs) So that might have been an Easter egg back at that. But she's directly making fun of Westboro Baptist Church in that verse because they're the ones who just insanely protest everything. Silly stuff. Just way, way too vocal to be. Hold on. Way too dumb to be vocal. I can't say that if I'm questioning my own sentence, right? Well, that just kind of canceled know, out exactly what I'm saying. They also protest by shocking people. So they use really vulgar language, the names for certain types of people that you shouldn't, that are offensive and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how they protest. Mm-hmm. They also had another sign in the music video that was also misspelled. It said like homosexuality is a sin, but it was spelled like homosexuality. Like homosexuality was misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I think she's probably just trying to say that, you know, People need to just educate themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Then later, we get to the drag pop queen pageant. The best. Mm -hmm. I love this part of the video. Yeah. And pop queen pageant is posted back on the stage with drag queens performing as pop stars. Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Adele, Cardi B, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Katy Perry, and Nicki Minaj. 
RuPaul is pictured tossing the winning crown in the air as Taylor sings, we've all got crowns, which just means there's no queen of pop. Like, and you don't have to pit women against each other. We can still, we can still be friends. It doesn't have to be someone's better than someone else or we're just rivaled up because we're both females and we're both successful. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping there's, well, probably not going to happen, but a collaboration with all these women. And this was the Easter egg for saying, boy. A collaboration with all of these women? I don't know. Would that, that would not be, be a super group? Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Adele, Cardi B, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj. The world would explode. If that ever happens, I need it to be like 20 hours long. Yeah, if they ever want to raise a lot of money for charity. True. Mm-hmm. Do that and sell the single. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that'd be crazy. <laughs> An updated Lady Marmalade with eight women. <laughs> <instead of> four. <laughs> <laughs> so then next, there's Ryan Reynolds. My and favorite. it's kind of like, well, but what is he doing there? Is, what does Ryan so Reynolds random. have to do with anything? You know, though. Yes. Okay. What? Take it away, Amy. Well, he, first of all, he's so cute. And he has, <laughs> <laughs> he has a little aviation American gin bottle on ice sitting next to him. But he's painting the Stonewall Inn, which is where they had riots in 1969 in Greenwich Village uh, in New Greenwich. York. I'm sorry, what? Greenwich Village. What did I say? Greenwich. Oh, like Harry Potter style? Is that how I'm saying it? (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, so they had demonstrations there, and she's just referencing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, it it was so random that because you have a lot of like gay icons and stuff like that in this video, and then it's like we go from we go from from RuPaul to Ryan Reynolds. It's like what's huh? (laughs) Where did this come from? He's the Bob Ross of the (laughs) music video. But it's cool because he still he still was making a point. He still was making a reference to an important something important that had happened in 1969. And then it also kind of was low key of Easter egg because Taylor then performed at the 50th anniversary show for like the Stonewall, like to raise money. But then okay, so we I don't want to move on too fast, but uh, right after Ryan Reynolds paints the Stonewall in. You go to the iconic moment that we've been waiting years and years for. Mm -hmm. Katy Perry shows up. Yes. What? Well, first, amazing. At first, you have Taylor Swift kind of lonely. Everybody's pairing up and just having a party, and here she is in French fry, and it's kind of like, well, what? What's which, going on over here? Which is great because so like she's looking through the crowd and everybody's dancing, and she and at that point she has her like blonde hair with the pink tips. Which is a reference, could be a reference to the I Know You Were Trouble music video where she has that same hair. And there's a scene where everybody's dancing at the club and she's looking around for a guy. But now she's not looking for a guy. Mm -hmm. She don't need no man. She Mm -hmm. is a rich man. She's looking for Katy Perry. Mm. Who shows up in a hamburger suit, which was the same one that she wore to the Met Gala that year. (laughs) And they made eyes with each other and ran up and embraced. And in that moment... I remember whenever we first saw that music video, we were like, are they going to kiss? <laughs> Is this going to be that are we moment? It was, right now? It's definitely a, a eyes are locked together, a slow walk towards each other. It's like, whoa, are they going to kiss? So it's a food fight and they're a happy meal, guys. Oh. Oh. Isn't that cute? Also, 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 burgers and french fries, B- BFF. Mm. Like oh, you. burgers and french fries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Also makes for a great Halloween costume. Yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. But in this article costumes. that I read, they were speculating, are Taylor and Katie exes? And would not explain the extreme bitterness between them. Whoa. But no. So before this music video came out, someone had leaked the narrative of the music video. And a fan got a hold of it and asked Taylor Swift, tagged her in a question and said, hey, are you and Katy Perry going to kiss in this music video? And how is this going to happen? And Taylor Swift responded, this is absolutely false. To be an ally is to understand the difference between advocating and baiting. Anyone trying to twist this positivity into something it isn't needs to calm down. It costs zero dollars to not step on our gowns. Uh Mm -hmm. I like that. And then the music video ends with advocacy. It ends with, let's show our pride by demanding on a national level our laws truly treat our citizens equally. Please sign my petition for Senate support of the Equality Act on change.org. A few of the other cameos that we haven't mentioned yet, and I think one of my favorite ones, because you just said, you know, don't step, it costs zero dollars to not step on our gowns. Um, there's a scene in it where they're, you know, all hanging out on the lawn chairs, like sunbathing, and there's the protesters, and then Billy Porter walks like in between them, like it's super like runway style, wearing a gown. It's like, don't step on our gowns. 
And uh, some people think that could be a reference to, like, I think that year is when Billy Porter wore this fabulous gown to it. I want to say it was the Oscars or the Grammys, maybe. It's some big-time award show, and a lot of people made fun of him. They're like, you're a man. You shouldn't be wearing a gown. But it's Billy Porter, and he should wear what he wants, whatever. Um, but he, So he was one of the people in the music video as well that we haven't talked about yet. Um, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, who is from Modern Family, he's, like, mm-hmm. really close friends with Taylor now. And he's, like, said before that, he didn't start listening to Taylor until like her later albums. And mm-hmm. he was like, I cannot believe I've been missing out on this. Yeah, I think this whole time. He's a really big fan. He's, too. He, yeah, he's yeah. a huge fan now. And there's a scene of him um, like at the altar, like renewing his vows with his husband, Justin yes. Makita. And it's uh, the person. What's it called? Officiating. Officiating is Sierra, mm-hmm. which is cute. There's I think so my, my favorite cameo is Todrick Hall. Yeah. Oh, how have I not mentioned him yet? I love Todrick Hall. He's the executive producer of this song. And choreographer. Uh, and, and choreographer. Winner. And Yeah. And so they. And inspo behind it, really. And best friend. Behind, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I just absolutely <laughs> love him. He's the nicest guy ever. And so, yeah. So I just wanted to say I love him. Yeah. Well, because he's walking down. Uh, they're strutting down they're 16th strutting, Avenue. And he looks amazing. He's wearing this like, not a cardigan, but like a. It's like a big flowy. A flowy uh, thing that's like covered in hearts. It's so not cool. a cape. It's like something. a duster? A duster, maybe? Like a... I was about to say fedora. That's not the right one. The kimono? fabric is... Uh, the maybe. fabric is... It's similar to a duster. It's just like a really long, flowy <laughs> robe. I don't know what Very it is. Very cool. I don't know. Can I say that he may have upstaged Taylor in this moment? He looked good. When they're good. strutting yeah. down the street? He yes. looked great. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's Sorry. pretty. It's pretty impressive <laughs> how he's commanding the attention in that. They're skipping down scene. 16th Avenue, <laughs> is what they're doing. And then he, whenever this song or this music video won at the VMAs, Todrick accepted the video, right? Because he, yeah, he's the one. He was really behind it. Well, the VMAs. It was the most nominated of the night. It had nine nominations. It ended up winning for Video of the Year and for. Uh, video for good, and I want to say video for good is when Todrick spoke, mm-hmm. um, and she let him have his moment, and it was really wonderful. And it's really cool if you watch the behind the scenes of the making of this video. She like goes up to him and like invites him to be like the executive producer of the video and all this stuff. It's really sweet. Um, but when she did uh, win video of the year at the VMAs, this is what she said: "This is a fan voted award." I first want to say thank you to the fans because in this video, several points were made. So you voting for this video means that you want a world where we're all treated equally under the law. Regardless of who we love, regardless of how we identify, at the end of this video there was a petition, and there still is a petition. For the Equality Act, which basically just says we all deserve equal rights under the law. Um, I love my co-executive producer, Todd Recall. I love my... <laughs> my cast lived their lives so authentically. Thank you for being the example that you are. I love you guys so much. Thank you, MTV, for lifting up this point in this video. We love you. So an, a, an Easter egg that... I, or not an Easter egg, but something really funny that I completely forgot about until I was looking at you need to calm down material online Mm -hmm. was as Taylor won, she's going, she's walking up on stage and there's a ton of people with her. So like a lot of the people that were in the music video and stuff like that, including a drag queen, her name's Jade Jolie. And so in the music video, when all the drag queens are up there and it's all the different pop stars, uh, she's the one that is Taylor Swift. So they look similar. John Travolta was presenting the award and he handed it to the drag queen. He handed it to Jade Jolie thinking it, it was, was Taylor, Taylor Swift. <laughs> and so there's this really awkward moment where like Taylor okay. Swift is like still walking up the steps and Travolta's like handing it to her and she's just standing there not accepting it. And he like tries to give it to her again. It's this so like funny. Another Adim Dazelle or whatever he did. <laughs> there's it's a setting so up John Travolta. <laughs> Okay, so this song was also uh, got some Grammy nominations. It was nominated for Best Pop Solo Performance at the Grammy Awards. Taylor didn't win, but I love looking at who else she was nominated against. Okay. So she was up against Beyonce for Spirit, Billie Eilish for Bad Guy, Ariana Grande for Seven Rings, but the winner was Lizzo for Truth Hurts. Oh, wonderful. Which is a great song. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Those are all great. Wow, what, yeah. a, good, what really, a good year. A really great category, yeah, for no best kidding. pop solo performance. What a good year. You know what else is great? People's comments on Reddit. Oh. They're so creative. And I have two of my favorite comments from Reddit. 
One person said, country Taylor never left. She just moved to a trailer park. (laughs) (laughs) And then this one is just everything. Where were you when Taylor Swift ended homophobia? (laughs) (laughs) Right, she did it. She solved it all. Way Mm -hmm. to go, Taylor. Mm -hmm. You need to calm down. Wow. Hey, well, that's it for this episode of 13 of Taylor Swift Fan Podcast. Tell us what we missed. What's your favorite Easter egg? What would you like to add to the conversation? All the ways to contact us are in the description of this podcast. Be sure you subscribe to us on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on right now. Give us a five-star rating. Write us a good review. And all the ways to contact us are in the description of this podcast. See you next time. Thanks for listening to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Subscribe for free and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts.